Good afternoon. All good. Had your lunch. Had uh, some amount of sleep also. Yeah. Because those are two important things, you know, for which we are living, for eating and sleeping. Because in a day we consume three times and we sleep for eight hours. So most of our time is put for these two things only. If those are not proper, then like day to day running will be difficult. So have good food, have fair amount of sleep, not less than six hours, not more than eight hours. Okay, somewhere between six to eight hours. That includes even the afternoon power nap or like super power nap or whatever it is. Okay, so try to, uh, uh, I mean, be healthy. Okay, so coming to uh, the CSAT, uh, yesterday I was talking about very basics of the things in CSAT. And yesterday we started looking into basic operations like uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. And I have told you what exactly you have to do for certain things. Okay, multiplication table is equally important. I have told you, I don't know how many of you have done that. And I don't, again, like press upon doing those things. Because I know like how motivated you will be and what will be your uh, real attitude towards learning those things. Okay, I don't mind. But the thing is, whatever may be the position of uh, you, whatever may be the position of your preparation level or your skill set or your ability, finally, everything will be pointed towards the institution itself. Everything will be pointed towards institution. Like, you know that CSAT class is going to begin. Okay, from this day. There is a basic preparation for that, right? There is a basic preparation. So it has to do with numbers. It has to do with numbers, correct? That means you should know the basics. I can't teach, you know, like addition, subtraction here. Addition, subtraction, I can't teach. Multiplication, division, I can't teach. I will build upon that thing. And when it comes to other stuff, technical stuff especially, technical stuff, maybe it is some understanding in science, we have the portion or the syllabus for UPSC, which is based upon science also. We learn certain things in physics and biology. And definitely all of us have learned physics and biology in our school. Okay. If you don't know like what is blood, what is heart, okay, what is atom, what is element, all that thing, then what shall we do? What shall we do? Can we teach the entire biology for one year? Can we teach entire physics for one year? Difficult, right? Okay, if we are dealing with, let's say, space technology, we'll tell about vehicle, we'll tell about satellite, the basic components we tell. If you don't understand the basics of, you know, like, what satellite does, then what should we do? So finally, we become the punching bag, you know, punch bag. Those who are come, punches us. Ah, it is not good. The teaching is not good. It is not effective. Yeah, it is like order of the day and we have to accept it. But it is very easy to you know, like tell that something is good or something is bad. But the preparation that is required, the basic level of preparation that is required for the subject. Yesterday I was uh, asking you the tables that shows like how well you are prepared and how well you are equipped. But we have to accept whatever the level that you have. We cannot comment on your level, no? We cannot tarnish your image or we cannot scold in the class that you don't have that basic also. Because we do, we have a fear that you might go. But here, standing here and taking everything to us, again, it needs a lot of motivation. With all that motivation, like we try to deliver. Okay. And when it comes to the number of hours that we deliver for it, the entire portion. Okay. I, I, I'll accept this challenge or I will give a challenge that we teach more than 800 hours. If some institution is teaching more than 800 hours, covering every nook and corner of the syllabus, please tell me. Okay. Then the second thing, this 900 hours cannot be taught, cannot be taught in single month or two months or six months. If you think of four hours a day, five days a week, 20 hours we can teach. So 900 hours divided by 20, it requires 45 weeks. It is close to 10 months. So managing 10 months timetable, it is not a joke. Because for 24 hours, you know, like a uh, uh, schedule of hours, 
from morning to evening, nothing will be in proper order. There will be half a zard. Sometimes we take breakfast at 8.30, sometimes we take breakfast at 10 o'clock. So nothing is in order. So ordering everything according to the timetable that is set, that is also difficult. But yes, the effort can be put to, you know, like make the things right. Understand? And the mistake that we do is, you know, like we give entire year's timetable. That is the mistake. Otherwise, we would have told next week's timetable we will give this week. That is the safest thing. So, from next year, we are going to do that thing only. Because every time, because of the ill health of the faculty or non-availability of the faculty or some other mishap has happened, we have to change. When you take one week, the entire thing will get disturbed. Okay. Rather than that, whenever you come to class, whenever you listen to anything, nothing is going waste. Because definitely, I know those who ever stand here and deliver, definitely they are more knowledgeable than you. Maybe after a period of time, you will become more knowledgeable for sure. But at this point of time, the people who are standing here and delivering, definitely they know better than you and they have a lot of, you know, like, uh, things to deliver. Understand? And it is very easy to, you know, like, and when you are sitting in the class, you have Google in your hand. Our Google is here. If I search something here, then that is kind of what? That is kind of negative thing for me. Understand? I cannot search here and teach. So most of the things we have to keep here. And while delivering, yes, there are, you know, like chances of making some errors. And that will happen. That is, uh, 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 I mean, natural for everyone. During our time, like if we had raised a question to any uh, uh, lecture, we would have been sent out of the class. That was the level of democracy what we had in the classrooms earlier. But somewhere that is required because that will not deviate the mood of the what mood of the uh, lecturer. But now what has happened? We are at the mercy of the students. We are at the mercy of the students. Actually, you are not. See, we are standing and shouting. You are sitting around say, and listening. Understand? Because you have paid, no? Because you have paid. So that is the thing, na? Like everything is weighed in terms of what you have paid. But actually that is not. That is not. Okay? So my request is what? Rather than, rather than what is happening around you, focus on what you are doing. What you are doing. Definitely, what we deliver in two hours here, it will require 20 hours for you to do the self-study. What we deliver in 4 hours, it requires 4 days to you know, like read. We are making the thing simpler. We are not telling that we will you know, like make everything peeled and put in your mouth. No. We are taking you to the water. Drinking is your problem. Okay. We will take you to the water. That's it. Understand? And in 900 hours, to manage across the year, it takes a lot of efforts. Okay. And definitely, we are having, you know, like the age group. Age group of the faculty here is somewhere 30 to 35, 40. 30 to 40 you can take. 30 to 40. The enlightenment level what we have today, definitely, it will be different when we are between 40 to 50. When we are between 50 to 60, our enlightenment level will be different. Okay, so every person has, you know, like, certain things to learn over the period of time. Understand? You cannot get the ideal things, ideal things, ideal Rama Rajya. You cannot expect. Okay? Only thing, whatever that is practically running, you have to make the best use of it. And when you are comparing, for example, when you compare A to B, C is better than B. D is better than C. E is better than D. Then there is no end. You will just go in searching of the best one. You will not do what you have to do. You will always target the other, how that person is doing. Don't do that. Don't do that. Focus on like whatever that has been told and whatever you have to do. Okay. Even if you reach your target by 60% or 70% in a day, in a week or in a month, whatever that you are uh, trying to do, that is more than enough. You cannot achieve 100% in anything. Academics, your goals, your life, you cannot achieve 100% thing. That is just chimera. That is what was the essay topic this year. Okay. Ideally, what we think, that also cannot be achieved. 
and materialistically what we try to achieve that also cannot be done whatever that is present today whatever that is available today you have to make the best use of that understand when you have not understood our phone numbers are with you our whatsapp our telegrams are there with you why can't you see only 5% to 10% of the people make use of that thing because they want to learn really learn they are not here to judge anyone okay so from now on at least focus on what you have to do focus on what you have to do we know what we have to do and we are doing it with the utmost honesty okay so coming to csat see csat is not everyone's cup of tea that is why people have deviated from maths very early in life but some unwanted things we have to do if you are not interested in history there is no escape you have to learn history if you are not interested in geography there is no escape you have to learn for that matter for that matter you cannot hate one subject or you can just you know like ignore some subject so you have to do that if you are not good with numbers you have to uh, become good in numbers you have to get acquainted to numbers whatever that is required you have to do if your sentence construction is not proper you have to do the proper sentence construction you have to write well okay if you are making grammatical errors you have to improve that one if your language is not fine you have to learn many sources are there you have to read you have to revise then only you are going to what excel in whatever that you are doing okay so my point of concern is have clarity have clarity what you have to do what you want the present world like it has become so complex so complex no one is clear about what they want no one is clear while you are coming here i don't know how clear you are with respect to the services that you are aspiring for after entering the services what you are going to do i'm not i'm not sure whether you are clear or not just somebody has told you have come here that, that is not going to help whatever that you are doing that has to have a purpose and that how to that has to come from within with proper information you should be doing it okay and we have all the support system we need not say that we do this that and all we are always available for your query even at the stroke of midnight we receive your calls okay get use of that one and here if you have history uh, i mean problem then you don't have to wait for umesh sir only if you have economic problem you don't have to wait for deepak sir only we are there we can handle everything actually but if i teach 800 hours 800 hours definitely you will get bored with me that is why we change the faces and again we have to listen comment no there is only one teacher in the institution if there are more teachers more teachers are making things complex it is very easy to combine this way or that way see why i am talking all these things is like the people get involved in these things rather than other thing so be sure about what you are doing okay i had asked you to do tables if you had not done that should i send you out of the class that can't happen no we have to be generous you have to make you sit because you have paid ultimately that is the thing if you were free students i would have kicked out but that is not the case now we don't have that freedom understand so try to understand try to be in terms with life try to be in terms with the practicality whatever that is running around okay don't expect the ideal things ideal things are not existing and you are not going to get the ideal things for sure okay csat paper has to be cleared you have to score 66 whatever that is required you have to do we teach here only for 60 hours we give tests that is our duty but whatever that you lack in you have to identify that you have to get those things addressed you have to talk to us and we will have some ways you have to listen to that and finally you have to do what you have to excel understand just listening to classes closing the books and like that is not going to help you understand so try to internalize and try to question in the class if you have problem try to question in the class even with respect to subject or delivery if you have any problem raise the problem in the class okay just keeping to yourself or keeping to uh, discussing with your neighbors or roommates it is not going to help for sure 
Okay, tell us what you require. Understand? So coming to these things, we have done this, we have done this, we have done this, and we have done this also. This also we have done. Yeah, this one. Okay, you also have to do few things, right? Yeah, one five nine nine. One five nine nine. So you have to factorize it. Factorize. So with what we can try? Three, because it is divisible by three. Yes. Three into five three three. Next what? Next what? Five thirty three has to be divided. Again, we are starting with prime numbers. Two we cannot apply. So even number we cannot apply. Three again no. Three again no. Then five we cannot apply. Seven we are going with only prime numbers. Seven yes. Can we apply? No. Eleven. Thirteen. Thirteen fours are, and thirteen ones are. Now forty-one. We have to divide forty-one. So divide forty-one. It is a prime number. Sure. If at all you are trying for forty-one, what all numbers you will try? Two you cannot. Three already we have tested. No. Five we cannot. Six we cannot. Seven you need not check because the square of forty-one it is close to six or seven. You stop your journey there. So all these are the prime factors of this number one five nine nine. Okay. Other things you try at home. If you are not getting the answer, let me know. Okay. Based upon this, based upon this, we are you know, like uh, hitting this question, and this question has been asked in the examination, and most of the questions what I have printed there, they are from the previous years. Okay, we have taken all the uh, possible questions. For example, in this sheet, you have nearly fifty problems, more than fifty problems. Earlier to this, earlier to this, I had only around twenty questions in this. So I have made sure that I have taken every topic from the number system or basic numeracy because in the year twenty twenty, twenty seven questions were asked from basic numeracy only. Forget about Average percentage, uh, simple interest, compound interest, time, speed, distance, time, and work. You forget about all those things. Only from uh, uh, numeracy, they had asked twenty-seven questions. That is why I am paying. I am uh, 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 focusing more on the basic numeracy. Okay, fine. Here in a school, every student is assigned with unique ID number. A student is a football player if and only if the ID number is divisible by. Okay. Whereas a student is a cricketer, if and only if the ID number is divisible by six. Okay. If every number from one to hundred is assigned to student, yeah, then how many of them play cricket as well as football? What we want here? Numbers. Are assigned from one to hundred. Yeah. If the number is divisible by four, then that person is a football player. Yes. Yes or no? Okay. Then, if a, a number is divisible by six, then that person is cricket player. We want the persons who are both cricketers and footballers. Then what numbers we have to look for? The numbers which are divisible by both four and six. So if you are looking for the numbers divisible by four and six, what you are looking exactly? Okay, tell me the first number which is divisible by both four and six. Twelve. Yeah, twelve is what? Yeah, it is a multiple of four and six. It is a least common multiple of four and six. That is nothing but LCM of six. This is where we use the LCM. Anyways, I am going to teach you what is LCM and HCF later. But 
actually we are looking for a number which is divisible by 12 or which is divisible by both 4 and 6. If you want only the football players among these 100 players, only the football players, how many football players are available? What you have to do here? From 1 to 100, you should look for a number which is divisible by so, how many numbers are there from 1 to 100 which are divisible by 4? Hmm? Yeah. All multiples of 4. But up to 100, how many multiples are there? Simple, no? 100 divided by 4. 100 divided by 4, no? See, it is somebody else's problem. That is why you are thinking like this. You become monitor of the class. There are 100 students in the class. You are assigning the roll number. Okay. And you have been given the problem. Like every fourth student is a football player. So how many students are football players? 25. 100 divided by 4. How many cricket players are there? Every sixth person is a cricket player. So 100 divided by 6. 16. It starts from 6. 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42. 48, 54, up to 96. Correct? Done. But some of them are both cricket players and football players. So, we have to look for the numbers which are divisible by 12. So, up to 100, from 1 to 100, how many multiples of 12 we get? 100 divided by 12. 8 players. So, that is the answer. It is mixture of so many things. Even this is an application of LCM. Okay, it is a range problem also. But such questions are coming in the examination. Understood? When we take up LCM, then it will be more clearer. Okay? Because LCM is a separate chapter that I have kept. Okay? That we will discuss. 8 digit number. 8 digit number. 4252746B. Leaves a reminder of 0. When divided by 3. When divided by 3. So when you are checking for the divisibility by 3, what do you do? You will make sum of all the digits and you will make sure that that is divisible by 3. Correct? So make the sum of all these. 4 plus 2 plus 5 plus 2. So 4 plus 2, 6. 6 plus 5, 11. 11 plus 2, 13. 13 plus 7, 20. 20 plus 4, 24. 24 plus 6. 30. But B is left. 30 plus B. And we want the sum to be multiple of 3. Already 30 is there. What is the least value I can put for B? To make the sum as, you know, like multiple of 3. What about 0? Zero? 0 is also a number, right? Huh? Why, instead of B, if I write a 0, isn't it a valid number? Yes, so we can put 0 also. Okay, so B can assume the value of 0. So when I add 0 to 30, it will become 30. Next, it can assume the value of 3. It can assume a value of, it can assume value of 9. So 30, 33, 36 and 39. These are the possibilities. So, value of B, possibilities are 0, 3, 6, 9. So, how many values are possible for B? Four values are possible. Understood? Usually, we make a mistake. Here, we don't think of 0 at all. So, that is the main mistake. That is where the examiner want to catch you. Understand? Generally, 50% of the people will put 3. Yeah? 3, 6, 9, they will consider. 0, they will... Leave it. Okay, done. Yeah, no issues. Bodmas. You must have heard of this person. Who is this person? Who is this person? Is he some mathematician like Pythagoras or something? No. It is just an abbreviation. It is just an abbreviation. So there is an expansion for this. B is what? Bracket. 
very good then single f or double f there is nothing called double f okay some books are misprinted this off as off okay single f then d division m multiplication then addition then subtraction fine in brackets how many types of brackets we have i am asking number of brackets so when i ask number of states you have to tell 28 you should not start with himachal pradesh punjab all that thing okay how many brackets are there three now tell me which all brackets are there first we will go with your liking very simple and very simple and the first bracket that we have to put actually mathematically this is correct we have to take the round bracket first for our usage if you need more than one pair of brackets then the flower bracket then square bracket if at it all you need one more bracket outside you can take only the square bracket if you need one more bracket inside you can take only the round bracket not the flower bracket okay fine so you have the freedom of taking other brackets inside also if brackets are not enough you can take one bar so here the order of solving order of solving is first you have to get rid of this bar then the innermost bracket then slowly try to break the outermost bracket okay so that is how you have to go off wherever off comes you have to replace that with multiplication mark simple wherever off is there you have to just replace it with multiplication mark see in your examinations you don't get the problems like this you don't get the problems like this only in the banking examination we get the problems like this usually you get the problems in sentence format in sentence format okay from these sentence format you have to make equations or you have to build some expressions you have to build some expressions if you use all the words in the sentence properly you can build the equation i'll show you how okay wherever off comes you have to put multiplication mark wherever is equal to comes there you have to put the equals mark yeah wherever percentage comes there you have to make it divided by 100 yeah so like that for every word in the sentence not for every word for most of the words in the sentence you have certain symbol so you have to put that symbol and proceed so that is an art how to take a sentence and build an equation that's an art so that i am going to teach you later okay so coming to this one then division multiplication addition and subtraction so this is the order if these symbols are there in a problem together then you have to give the priority for this then this then this then this usually people say addition and subtraction can be do uh, can be done simultaneously but i'll tell you there is a small glitch in that i'll tell you but when it comes to division and multiplication it is always first division for example in this problem you are going to solve this first here we don't have let's say 8 divided by 4 into 2 what should be the answer 4 8 divided by 4 is 2 2 into 2 is equal to 4 if you don't know the minutes of this you will do this first and for you the answer would be 1 that is wrong this is wrong okay next one more 
example both are division both are division what you will do two division marks are there so there is no tussle for priority it is always division but which division first from left or right from left or right first is this or this it is always from left it is always from left first solve 8 divided by 4 then if you go these are the minutes we learn you know these are the minutes that we learn we have to value these things 4 divided by 2 is 2 8 divided by 2 Four. Yeah. So this is wrong. This is correct. Understood. And when it comes to addition and subtraction simultaneously, there are few things that I'll tell. Oh. and let me okay if you come across a problem like 8 plus 5 minus 4 plus 6 minus 8 plus 2 minus 3 okay only addition and subtraction are there they look very simple but most of the people will do mistake in this even today i make mistakes in this because of the hurry because of the hurry make one discipline here always you have to take the like terms aside like terms aside means all positive aside first no matter how expert is you have in this solution okay but trust this process first you have to take 8 plus 5 plus 6 plus 2 make that one 8 plus 5 plus 6 plus 2 that is 21 then Minus four, minus eight, minus three. So answer is. In hurry, what do we do? Sometimes, sometimes, we do this one. Five minus four, that is plus one. Fine, but if you make by mistake four plus six as ten, it is not four. It is minus four. Here, it is not eight plus two. It is minus eight plus two. That is why take like terms aside. Make the sum and subtract. Okay, these are like terms, and these are like terms. Make the sum separately and do it. Okay, follow this. Follow this. Otherwise, if you make a minute mistake in one of the calculation, the answer would be wrong. Okay, that will be so frustrating because these are the basic operations that we are doing. Okay, fine. We'll go uh, problem by problem now. Okay, tell me first one. Forty-eight divided by six. So twenty-five minus eight plus twenty-four. Now twenty-four plus twenty-five. Forty-nine minus eight is equal to forty-one. Then here the innermost bracket. Two into ten. Twenty, twenty-five minus ten. This is nothing but five. So the result of the round bracket is this five. Then three of five is nothing but three into five. Then five plus three of five. How much is this? Five plus fifteen. Five plus fifteen is twenty. But Don't forget this seventy-eight, seventy-eight minus seventy-eight minus seventy-eight minus so seventy-eight minus twenty is equal to fifty-eight is equal to fifty-eight. Done. No issues. Yeah. Here, first solve this bracket. Five. Four of five. Four into five. Twenty. Fifty-two minus twenty plus 
4 into 7, 28. Add these two, 52 plus 28, 80 minus 20 is equal to 60. 80 minus 20 is equal to 60. Done. Any difficulty you faced? Fine. So this is a small thing. You don't get the questions directly. But it is fair to have the idea. Because in larger expressions, uh, the thing I told, na, 8 divided by 4 divided by 2. If you didn't know the minute thing, half of you must have done the calculation from right. So that's strong. Okay. Done. Shall we move ahead? Next thing, there are few problems which come, like if you go through the previous year question papers, there are at least one or two questions in the every year's paper that is that is asking for highest number and lowest number in the sense if you take digit wise that is digits in the number digits in the number single digit one digit the lowest number and the highest number Lowest number, lowest one digit number is what? 0 or 1? Yeah, there is a dichotomy, there is a debate. When you are thinking for the lowest natural number, it is 1. The lowest whole number, it is 0. But generally we take 1. Because most of the calculation will be doing for what natural number or you can take like this also. Then the highest single digit number 9. Then 2 digit number. The lowest 2 digit number 10. Highest 2 digit number. Yes. Lowest 3 digit number highest three digit number highest four digit number thousand sorry lowest four digit number thousand highest four digit number nine 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 yes or no one number less than this will take you to the highest three digit number one number more than this will take you to the lowest five digit number. So you have to be sure about this thing. Okay. And in the examination, they'll ask you, depending upon this, like the question will be like this. Find out the lowest four digit number, which is divisible by eight. Find the lowest four digit number, which is divisible by eight. So, in such questions, when they have asked lowest four digit number, first of all, write that thing. Write that thing. Then, whatever the process that they have told, carry out that. First, you have to write this. There, half of the problem is done. Then, you carry out the process. Maybe it is for lowest number or the highest number. Understood? Before this one, I would like to tell you something. Now, consider even 0 as the you know, like single digit number because we are in base 10 system. Yes, base 10 system. We start with 0, we end at 9. Okay. Now, tell me from 0 to 9, how many numbers are there? 9 or 10? Sure. Because the difference is 8. Sorry, difference is 9 plus 1. Yes. Yesterday we have learned this, right? No. No. So whenever you are counting, so this is the basics of counting. Basics of counting. 0 to 9. So from 2. You are counting from 2. 0 to 9. What is the difference between these numbers? What is the difference between these numbers? 0 and 9. What is the difference? Difference means 9 minus 0. 9. Add 1 to that. 
So how many numbers are there from 0 to 9? 10. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 numbers. If I have asked you, like numbers between, numbers between 0 and numbers between 0 and 9. When I ask the numbers between 0 and 9, do you consider 0 and 9 both? You have to discard them. That means, here if you have got difference plus 1, here you will get difference plus 1 minus 2 or simply difference minus 1. If you are counting the numbers between 0 and 9, you will start from 1 and end at 8. So, 8 numbers are there. So, in the examination, when you get from 2, the calculation is different. Between, calculation is different. From 2, you have to consider both the ends. Between, you should discard both the ends. That is why difference plus 1 will come in from and from 2. And difference minus 1 will come in between and. Okay. Coming to this 10 to 99. 10 to 99. 10 to 99. How many numbers are there? From 10 to 99. How many numbers? How many? 90. Sure? From 10 to 99, how many digits are there? In every two digit number, there are two digits. Correct? So totally, 90 numbers are there. From 10 to 99, 90 numbers are there. These are numbers. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. These are numbers. Digits are like in 10, 1 and 0 are the digits. So in every number, there are two digits. In two digit number, there are two digits. If there are 90 numbers totally from 10 to 99, how many digits are there? How many? 180. 90 numbers into two digits. 180. So keep this thing in mind. Okay. 90 numbers and 180, 180 digits. Similarly, from 100 to 999, how many numbers are there? How many? Difference is 899. Plus 1, no? 900 numbers are there. 900 numbers. How many digits? How many digits? Hmm? Thousand eight hundred or two thousand seven hundred? Because in each three digit number, three digits are there. So, 900 numbers into 3. So, 2700 digits. Please note these down. Because we are getting the questions pertaining to the number of uh, numbers or number of digits in the examination. Okay. Please note them down. From 10 to 99, 90 numbers are there and 180 digits are there. And here, 100 to 99... 900 numbers are there and 2700 digits are there. Okay. See, all these things have some application in future. In the further classes, like we have all these applications. Now you must be clueless why we are learning all these things. But these are the minutest things, you know. Like if you go on doing this in the examination hall, one problem will take 10 minutes. We are learning these as facts now. How we are learning the tables as facts, we need not work out in the examination hall. Similarly, we are learning these facts in the uh, class. Okay, done? So, pertaining to these things, we will solve some problems. The smallest four digit number exactly divisible by 7 is. First, write this number. Smallest four digit number. Write that. What is that? 
थाउजंड और टेन थाउजंड थाउजंड डोंट गेट कन्फ्यूज इन अ फोर डिजिट लोएस्ट नंबर द नंबर ऑफ जीरो इन फाइव डिजिट लोएस्ट नंबर नंबर ऑफ डिजिट विल बी फोर बिकॉज वन विल बी देर नो If you remove that one, there is no value for that number at all. Okay, one lakh. How many zeros are there? Five. One crore. How many zeros are there? Seven. Very good. We require only that much. Hundred crore, thousand crore, lakh crores don't go. Okay, thousand. Now they are asking us to do what? To divide it by seven. Do that. We'll see. at least we'll do the basics we'll see the problem later 1000 is being divided by 7 71 za 7 then 30 74 za 28 20 za 14 this is the remainder now what to do okay Four digit lowest number we wrote, we divide by seven. But they are asking what the lowest or the smallest four digit number which is divisible by seven. Now, what is this? Yeah, six I know. But uh, what is the position of this six? It is a remainder. Remainder, yes. Remainder means what? Let's say you have been given thousand chocolates and you have to distribute among seven children. Seven children, you distributed perfectly. How many are remaining with you? Six. Six. If you are very conservative person, what you will do? You will take the take those six chocolates and move away. If you are very generous person, what you will do? Very good. Add one chocolate and distribute. Yes, that is what we have to do here. If I remove this six, this is extra, right? If you want to na, divide this thousand by seven, we are getting this six number as extra. If you remove this six from thousand, how many will be remaining? If you remove six from thousand, nine ninety four will be remain. Is nine ninety four a four digit number? It's a. Is it meeting our need? Is it meeting our need? No. We have to make it four digit. To remain this as four digit, we have to add something to it. So what we have to add here? In this case, if you want to distribute these chocolates perfectly, how many chocolates you are going to add? Yes. That one is nothing but the deficit. Deficit, right? so always we add the deficit to the number to keep it as the smallest possible number we add the deficit to smallest possible smallest possible number s yes? understood this is actually excess this is an extra got my point in the otherwise case in the otherwise case where they have given the largest number and they are asking you to do the same thing in that time if we had done this for let's say three digit number and you want to remain that three digit number as it is so you'll subtract because if you add something that might become four digit at that time what do we do exactly opposite of this subtract the excess subtract the excess to from subtract the excess from the highest possible number write this i'll show you the example in the next question write this one first add the deficit or subtract the excess if it is smaller number you have to add if it is a bigger number you have to subtract yes this problem you understood 
if we had taken six chocolates away it would have become three digit number but we want four digit that is why we have to add okay we are adding one and making it thousand one we are making it thousand one okay next question when we solve we will be having more clarity this i will come back okay this is also least digit okay we will do with this number we will do with this number or i'll show you the otherwise possibility of this number this is four digit number i'll change this question you don't rub in your this thing this is an extra question okay the smallest three digit number exactly divisible by sir answer we'll find out so what is this this is largest okay largest three digit number exactly divisible by 7 what is the largest three digit number 999 and we have to divide by 7 go on doing it 7 ones are 7 then 2 9 7 fours are 28 1 9 then 7 twos are 14 remainder is 5 in this case what we will do in the earlier case we added the deficit in this case subtract the excess 999 is there you remove 5 from that you will get the answer as 994 this is what you have to do whenever you are dealing with the largest possible number you are subtracting the excess whenever you are dealing with the smallest possible number you are adding the deficit add the deficit to smallest subtract the excess from the largest that is what you have to remember that is what i have made you to write i have not given any formulas okay these are the sentences that i will be giving put it in a box or put star mark that you have to revise okay next question least number must be added to 1056 what is the least number that has to be added to 1056 to get a number exactly divisible by 23 so here they are not asking the least number or the highest number they only have given one number 1056 so take this 1056 and divide it by 23 do this process we'll see later what exactly has to be done okay 23 huh? for this you have to know the tables of 23 that is the problem yeah there is no shortcut there is no alternative 23 fours are 92 1 3 and 6 then 23 fives are 1 1 5 so here 21 they are asking what what least number must be added whenever the addition comes whenever you are adding you are adding the deficit mind you whenever you are adding you are adding the deficit so how much is the deficit here 21 is the deficit 21 is excess if you remove this excess from 1056 then you can divide that number by 23 perfectly earlier in the problem you were remained with six chocolates you added one right here we are adding the deficit how much is the deficit here to make this uh, number divisible by 23 how much we have to add 21 is already there if you are generous enough to give 2 it will become 23 and it will become divisible by 23 so we have to add 2 so deficit is this 2 so answer is 2 so 1056 plus 2 1058 that is divisible by 23 perfectly understood so whenever it comes for addition you have to add the deficit whenever it comes for subtraction you have to what 
you have to subtract the excess. Whatever remainder that has come, na, that you have to remove. Okay. Next. Least six digit number exactly divisible by 349. Oh, oh, oh. I was asking up to 20. It went to 23. Now I am asking for 349. That's okay. We'll try. First, write the six digit number. How many zeros? Five or six. For six digit number, you will write five zeros or six zeros. Because you have to write one also, right? Yeah. Then divide by 349. Yeah, it is difficult. But see, look at the first digit here. And look at two digits here. Somewhere three threes are we can try. And it is all trial and error. Trial and error. Okay. If you do it by three, it will not go. So, do it by two. You take time. You take time for this question. I don't have a problem. So, 349 into two, it will be 690. Sorry. 698. 1000 minus 698. 302. Then put 0. Yeah, I know it is difficult to arrive at the solution here. You can take time, but I will do here. Into 8, it will go. So that is 2792. Okay, you take time. I don't have a problem. Okay, here 30 is there, here 3 is there. Yeah, you will try with 9, it will not go, you will settle with 8. It, it takes time, I know. Then, if you subtract this one, this is 228. 228. So, 228, one more 0, you have to divide by 6. So, this will be 2094. So, 186 is the remainder. 186 is the remainder. But, this is the least 6 digit number. Should we subtract the excess or add the deficit? It is a 6 digit least number. It is a 6 digit least number. And we want six digit number. Should I subtract the excess or add the deficit? Because we want to keep the six digit number intact. If I remove something from there, it will become five digit. So that is why we have to add the deficit. But what is the deficit? 349 minus 186. So that is 163. That is 163. Okay, 163. So, this is the deficit that you have to add to this. That is 1 lakh plus 163. That is 1 lakh 163. I am sure some of you have missed the habit of reading this. If I give you a large number, definitely will struggle. You don't know where to put the comma and all. Yeah. It is 1 lakh 163. Okay. Next. 5 digit number exactly divisible by 279. Greatest 5 digit number. So, first of all, write the greatest 5 digit number. Double nine, triple nine, And try to divide by 279. Try to divide by 279. At least try. I will give a minute. Use bigger spaces. Don't be conjuice in. Use bigger.
first we will try with one two three see here this number is beginning with two that number is beginning with nine at least we will try with four two fours are so you will try with four if it is not by four then you will try with three try so here 279 3 is a it will be 837 so it will be 162 so 9 here here 5 is a I know it takes time at least you should try okay you should be in that direction at least okay so it will be 234 take one more nine we'll apply with eight If you expect me to teach how to multiply 279.8 and write this one, I won't do. Okay, you take time, no problem. But you have to do by yourself. Now 117 is there. This is excess or deficit? 117 is excess or deficit? Are? Always the remainder is excess. We have divided some number perfectly and we are left with some number that is always excess. So this excess, you will do what? Always you will subtract the excess. There is no point of adding the excess at all. It is always subtracting the excess. So subtracting the excess from 9999. 9. 117 you subtract. What will be the answer? 99. 882. Okay, fine. Yeah. Done. Is it okay? Yeah, calculation part you take time. See, when we are dividing by three digit and all, it gets difficult. But at least understand the logic, leave some space. You can work out at your room or house or home, whatever, wherever you live. Okay. So, this part you don't worry. You understand this part. This is excess. We have to subtract. Done. Next, problems on ranges. Ranges in the sense, I have already discussed. For example, for single digit, 0 to 9 is a range for single digit. For two digit number, for two digit number, 10 to 99 is a range. For three digit number, 100 to 999 is a range. Usually, the questions are asked only in this range, not beyond this. They will no, uh, not go for four digit. They will stick to uh, two digit or three digit at the max. They don't go beyond this because it will become very cumbersome and you have only two hours. You will spend the whole day for that problem only. If they have asked four digit number. So, they will stay with three digit number because within few minutes you can solve that. Okay, understood. Usually, here they ask with respect to how many numbers have been used from this number to this number. How many digits are there from this number to this number? Or 3 has come how many times? 4 has come how many times from this range to this range? Here you have to understand few facts. As I told, here we have totally 10 numbers and 10 digits in single digit number. In range from 10 to 99, we have 90 numbers and 180 digits. In three digit number, we have 900 numbers and 2700 digits. Got it? Yes. Yeah, with this knowledge, we'll go for a few problems. Every problem is unique problem in this 
uh, category. Every problem is unique problem, but you have to know the basics. This is the basics. Okay. How many three digit numbers are there? So when it comes to three digit, your mind should go to 100. Then it should stop at 999. Okay. Three digit numbers are there in between 100 to 300. They only have given the range now. They only have given the range. That is 100 to 300. Tell me from 100 to 300, how many numbers are there? From 100 to 300, how many numbers are there? Few people will be doing only this. Voice will not be coming outside. Huh? How many numbers are there from 100 to 300? From 100 to 300. To not 1. Because you have to count 100 also. Yes? If I had asked the numbers from 101 to 300, then 200 numbers are there. So here 100 to 300, totally 201 number are, numbers are there. Having first and the last digit as 2. This is also a problem of permutations and combinations. I will teach later permutations and combination. But it has some relation with what? The range numbers. So we are thinking of 3 digit number which has to start from 2 and end with 2. Yes? Is that fine? Now our job is to fill this blank. In how many ways I can fill this blank? How many ways? 1 to 9 or 0 to 9? Yeah, if I put 0, then also it is valid, 2 not 2. So, from 0 to 9, I am filling this space. So, in how many ways I can fill the space? 2 not 2, 2 not 2, 2 1 2, 2 2 2, 2 3 2, 2 4 2, like that up to 2 9 2. So, answer is simple. Okay? But they have asked only one place here. If they had asked two places, it would have been complex. Okay? We will go for higher level of problems. Is it understood? This is simplest. Okay? Two is fixed. Two is fixed. Middle number, how many options? Zero to nine. Okay? Ten options. Next. Integers are listed from 700 to 1000. Integers are listed from 700 to 1000. In how many integers is the sum of the digits 10? 700 to 1000. Think of this number 1000. Are we getting the sum of the digits at 10? No. 1. So, don't worry about 1000. Think of the numbers from 700 to 999. Think of the numbers 700 to 999. So, we are thinking of three digit numbers here. Few numbers are starting with 700. We don't know about this. Few numbers are starting with 800. Few numbers are starting with 900. Then, yeah. They are telling the sum of the digits must be 10. Sum of the digits means sum of all these digits must be 10. Now, already this place is occupied. That is by... 7. Now, the sum of these two numbers should be how much? Sum of all three numbers is 10. Sum of these two numbers? Always start with 0. Make this practice. Always start with 0. Okay? Otherwise, it will be like, it is not a disciplined way. Okay? Always start with 0. If you fill this with 0, what should I fill here? For these two places, one is 0, other is 3. Quickly reverse those digits. Quickly reverse those digits. This is one more option. You have to have this practice. Start with 0 always. Get the other number also. Quickly reverse it. Now, after 0, what I can put? 1. 1, if I put 1 here, will be now 7 reverse it then any other option 
थ्री प्लस जीरो जीरो प्लस थ्री टू प्लस वन वन प्लस टू डन करेक्ट तो दीज आर द फोर नंबर विच विल गिव अस द सम ऑफ टेन स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम सेवन सिमिलरली हियर टेल मी आई पुट जीरो हियर वॉट शुड आई राइट हियर टू वेरी गुड रिवर्स इट देन विल यू रिवर्स दिस There is no fun in reversing it. Okay, don't do that. Here nine, I put zero. One. So these are the numbers. These are the possible numbers. How many numbers are there? Nine such numbers. Four here, three here, two here. Yes. If you are understanding this problem, then you will understand the chapter of permutations and combination very easily. such problems are applications of permutations and combinations also so that is why in range problems always we you know like integrate the knowledge of permutations and combination without understanding the theoretical knowledge of permutations and combinations you are already doing the problems of permutations and combinations here okay are they difficult to understand you got it right practically you are understanding yeah next the number of times the digit 5 will appear while writing the integers from 1 to 1000 you are writing the numbers from 1 to 1000 and you are noting down how many times you are writing 5 how many times you are writing 5 imagine 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 that you are writing the numbers from 1 to 1000 and you are counting the number of fives that is coming first of all you will need whole day to write numbers from 1 to 1000 then to identify the fives how many times they have come one more day or one night so it is totally a 24 hours program but again we have learned few things now we have learned few things that is that is this one nine uh uh let's say 1000 don't worry i'll show you something let us start writing the numbers from 000 to 999 i'll tell you i am taking this 000 which is prior to 1 and i am taking a number 999 prior to this 1000 either you count from here to here or here to here you are going to the same number of fives because they don't have fives that is why you change the range that is okay why i am taking this range because it is the basic it is the basic because here we are starting with zero in all three digits here we are ending with nine in all three digits so this is the proper range so 000 to 999 how many numbers are there very good how many numbers thousand numbers are there correct let's say i have given you the job of typing or writing the numbers from 000 to 999 how many times you will write or how many times you will type how many buttons you will press you are typing totally 1000 numbers which are consisting of three digits each 3000 right so you will be writing and you are writing from 000 to 999 you are using all the possible uh, numbers you are using 0 you are using 1 you are using 2 you are using 3 up to 9 all 10 numbers you are using is yes. while we are writing the numbers from 000 to 999 trust me all the numbers are given equal importance all the numbers are given equal importance because these three places have to be filled correct this place can be filled in 10 ways 0 to 
we can fill this place 10 ways. Similarly, we can fill this place 10 ways. We can fill this place 10 ways. So totally 10 into 10 into 10, 1000. Yes, so those are the possibilities. But we are using three buttons for each number. So totally we are typing 3000 buttons. And we are using all the numbers from 0 to 9 with equal priority. We are giving equal priority to all the numbers. How many numbers are there to type? On a keyboard? On a keyboard. 0 to 9, 10. Totally you are typing 3000 numbers or you are typing 3000 buttons. But buttons are limited to 10. Each button, how many times you are pressing? You are pressing totally 3000 buttons. But you have only 10 buttons. You are pressing each button for 10 times. Sorry, 300 times. 3000. So, 3000 divided by 10 buttons. You are typing each number or each digit for 300 times. Tell me how many times you are pressing 5. How many times you are pressing 6. How many times you are pressing 9. As simple as that. So 5, how many times you are pressing? But in general practice, I don't write 0, 0, 0 like this. I start like this, right? Then I write 1. I don't write like this. Next is 0, 0, 2. But I don't write like this. I don't consider these zeros at all. Getting my point? Getting my point? So now, one more challenge. One more challenge. If we don't write this in this fashion, that is affecting only the number of zeros, yes or no? If you don't use the zeros which are not having any value, you are only dropping those zeros. Are you dropping any number from 1 to 9? You can discard zeros which don't have value. But from 000 to 999, the numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, can they be dropped? If you drop them, the whole value will change. So, from 1 to 9, in any case, you are typing 300 times. 1 to 9. 0, it varies. Even sometimes, if you write 0, 5, automatically 0 will be vanished. Understand? In that case, remember this fact. From 1 to 1000 or from 0 to 999, like we are pressing 0 only for 190 times. Take this fact. You can count. You can spend one day and one night and you can count the number of zeros. We are typing only 190 zeros. We are typing only 190 zeros. Okay, fine. But all other numbers, we are typing for 300 times. Fine, is it okay? Remember all these as facts. If a similar question comes with a change in digit, if they ask it, Within fraction of second, you should be able to take 300. That is what I want. That is what I intended to do in these classes. You should remember at least 100 facts which others don't know. Understand? In the examination hall, I will tell you at least 4 to 5 such questions will be there. With just the memory, you can tick. You don't have to work out at all. Understand? So such things I will be teaching. Right? Is there any difficulty? Yes. If you write 000 to 999 in your paper and start counting it, you will make your life hell. Okay, don't do that. Buy my shortcuts and do that. That's it. If you want to become mathematician or do research in that, please take me also. I will be part of that one. I will be very happy. But right now, we are facing CSAT paper and our aim is 66. Okay, let us learn the shortcuts and wind up. Right? Yeah. Next, very beautiful problem. 
but this problem has you know, like the ability to completely destroy you that is why if you think that this will destroy you first of all the self awareness should be there that is what we discuss in emotional intelligence no self awareness this has the ability of destroying me so avoid it so such questions have to be taken at the last but i'll solve it here because it is my karma yeah i have to solve it otherwise ah, sir i don't know hmm? okay anyways i know what i know yeah here while writing the numbers from 700 to 1000 how many numbers occur in which the digit at hundreds place is greater than the digit at tens place and the digit at ten place is greater than the digit at units place to digest this you will require one minute to digest and if you at all want to digest it to make the mood you will need another minute but you can solve these questions at the end of the paper first you solve the easier questions then you can at all needed you can go ahead with this so here they are giving again the numbers from 700 to 1000 okay don't worry about 1000 okay we are starting the numbers with 7 these two places are empty we are starting the number from 8 these two places are empty we are starting from 9 these two places are empty these two places are empty okay fine now they are telling that the number at hundreds place should be more than this should be more than this number and this number should be more than this number while imagining only you will get scared okay but don't worry i am going to ease that one here again 8 should be greater than this and this number should be greater than this similarly correct now let us do some activity with this 7 7 should be greater than this number. What is the highest number that I can put here? Very good. This is the possible number. Okay. Keep this 6 intact. 6 intact. And change this digit. So how many times, how many ways you can write? zero also never miss zero okay it can ruin your life yeah never miss zero so pi to zero you can fill the way in six ways five four three two one five four three two one similarly if you put five here how many ways you can put this i mean fill this place four to zero four three two one zero so how many ways now you got the pulse of the question just write that's it if you put six you will have six ways if you put five you have five ways if you put four so this is done similarly here seven is the highest simply put seven here there is no discussion there is no debate at all so it will go up to one then you put eight here so possibility eight so now what we are doing we are counting these numbers one to six one to seven one to eight this is one more exercise okay usually i do this exercise when i am teaching averages when i am teaching averages this is what the sum of first six numbers sum of first six natural numbers what is it you have learned something in the school n into n plus one by two or simply these are smaller numbers add it 
1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6 plus 4, 10, 10 plus 5, 15 plus 6, already you have counted up to 6, plus 7, already you have counted up to 7, count 8, add all these things, that is, But if you go on working every point of time, every iteration, it will take more than 10 minutes. Though you know the logic, but do all, but to do all these iterations, you will require more time. Don't do that. Have confidence here only. If we have 6 ways here, if we have 5 ways here, 4, 3, 2, 1, write it. Here, start with 7, write up to 1. Here, start up to 8 and write up to 1. Then add them, add them, add them. Then add the totals. Then write. This is one of the toughest problem that can come in the examination. I have told you already, this is not the problem to be solved in first round. You have to know that this will destroy me. So keep it for later. If it is inevitable to fight with this problem, we will fight at the end, not in the beginning. Okay, fine. If you have not understood this, it is fair enough. While I am doing for permutation and combinations, I will again explain. Okay, because such problems we are going to solve anyways. Okay, hope at least half of you have understood this one. Because you should be able to imagine the numbers here. 765, 764, 763, likewise. 754, 753, likewise. 876, 875 or 865, 864, you should be able to imagine. And you are imagining 85 numbers. It is not a joke. Okay. It needs certain, you know, like imagination skill also. Don't worry. At least, I mean, take it at the face value. When we are doing permutation and combination, things will get clearer. Okay. Okay. Quickly, this is not a big deal. How many integers are there between 1 to 100? 1 to 100, which have... 4 as digit, that means in that number 4 is there, in that number 4 is there, but are not divisible by 4, but are not divisible by 4. There is no shortcut here, shortcut in the sense there is no formula. We have to work out practically, okay. Write the numbers wherever 4 comes, first write the horizontal way, first number is 4, next 14, 24, 34, 44, 54, 64, 74, 84 and 94. Any other number is there? Yeah, I will come to that. But in horizontal way. Yeah. First number. Ah. Now you have understood the value of 0. Always start with the number including 0. Okay. Let 0 be your first attempt. Okay. Then go for 1. Please mind this one. Otherwise, you know the concept, but if you miss 0, answer will be wrong. Okay. So 41, 42, and 43. Here, 45, 46, 47, 48. 49. Right? And we are marking the numbers which are not divisible by 4. Yes? Not divisible by 4. This is divisible. This is not. So now every alternative number is not. By now, you might have understood. 4 is divisible by 4. 24 is divisible by 4. 44, 64 and 84 are divisible. Others are not. Coming from here, 40 is divisible by 4. Yes. What about these three? Every fourth number is divisible now. Here every alternative number. Here every fourth number is divisible. Then these three are not divisible. Then this one is not divisible. Correct? Yes or no? Yeah. Now count how many are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. How many? 
but people have made very silly mistakes in this problem the first mistake that they have done is they have not considered 40 though it doesn't matter though it doesn't matter and few people like they take the horizontal wise and separately they will take the hor vertical wise there they tend to write 44 one more time so that also is the mistake so in the range problem especially the numbers which are lying at the center or which are coming in both horizontal and vertical ways you should be mindful of those things okay yeah please give care to that and also give care to zero you have to begin with zero yeah done any difficulty no right yeah how many ah this is done right now yesterday i was telling about factors and multiples i want the answer from your end now what is a factor i already explained that is where i begun the disability test factor is a number which divides the given number divides in the sense perfectly divides the given number without any remainder or remainder as zero okay what is a multiple multiple is a number which can be divided by a given number factor is always a small number multiple is always a bigger number understood this factor is always a small number multiple is always a bigger number yes is that clear because see the multiples of 2 it start with 2 4 6 8 all these are bigger than 2 or equal to 2 this one is equal to 2 all these are bigger than 2 coming to the factors of 8 8's factors 8 4 2 1 these are the factors of 8 yes or no all these are either equal or smaller to 8 these are smaller this is equal so factors will always be smaller than or equal to the given number and the multiples are what greater than or equal to the given number this has to be very clear in the mind okay yesterday i was asking you to find the factors of 12 okay i told you one method of finding the factors also yes so one here 12 2 here 6 3 here 4 here where you have to end the matter you should not go any other, uh, any further because if you write 4 3 will come here it is simply a repetition don't worry then 1 here 18 here 2 here 9 here 3 here 6 here all these are factors if there are no other factors at least two factors will be there they are natural factors one and itself if there are other factors then well and good if there are no other factors then that number is called as prime number if there are other factors than one and itself then they are called as composite number yes what about one neither prime nor composite done this much you have okay with this knowledge with this knowledge we will go to LCM and HCM. Here this F is what? Factor. What is this M? Multiple. Yes? Yeah. Now we'll go ahead with this LCM first. We are finding the least common multiple. And tell me, for the first time in your life, when did you use this LCM? And why? Yeah? When? Yeah, don't tell me the date, okay? Yeah, when? Yeah, school, yeah. Very good. Thank God you have learnt in school only. Okay. Okay. Why? Because it was part of curriculum. There is one application of LCM. That is why I am asking. When we come, when we came across that application, then only we learnt LCM. Very good. So basically, when you are adding fractions or subtracting fractions, you came across different denominators, then you had to find the LCM. For example, the simplest 
fraction is 1 by 2. Another simplest fra uh, 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 fraction is 1 by 3. You want to add them. Can you add them just like 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, 2 plus 3 is equal to 5? Trust me, trust me, even today in India, teachers teach this. Seriously, seriously. And I have caught few teachers also. Not now, 20 years back. Okay. That is, one of my cousin was, you know, like, in the book, in classwork book, it was taught. So that is why we are here, uh, we are like this and we are here. Understand? Okay. So when there are different denominators, we cannot add them. We cannot add them. At least we have to make them equal. Or we have to find one common number which represents both 2 and 3. For example, 2 and 3 only. They, they are not fractions. They are natural numbers. Can I add them? 2 plus 3? Because unknowingly this is there. That is why I add. What about this? Can I add? Because there is common denominator. There is no common denominator here. That means this is from different world and this is from different world. We have to make one representative which has the features of both 2 and 3. That is the feature, nothing but the features of multiplication. Okay, 2 and 3. We are finding a number which represents both 2 and 3. Which is that number which represents both 2 and 3? 6. Usually, our multiples are nothing but the representative of those numbers. So, if you want to find out the LCM of 2 and 3, first of all, write the M multiples. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. These are the multiples of 2, right? Then 3. 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. These are the multiples of 3. Now, look for common multiple. Which are the common multiples here? Then, it will go on like that. Now, find out the least. Least is 6. So, LCM of 2 and 3 is? So, this is the basics of this. First, we wrote the multiples. Then, we marked the common multiples. Then, we arrived at the least common multiple. Don't you think that 12 is also a representative of 2 and 3? Yes. 18 is also a representative of 2 and 3? Yes. Because 18 has a feature of 2. That means 18 is divisible by 2. 18 is divisible by 3. But why I am using 6 only? Because unnecessarily why to make the complication in the calculation? Anyways, we have to cut, no? We will waste time. That is why make 6. Even if you consider 12 and 18, you will get the answer for sure. But you will waste time. Okay? That is why we are sticking to the least common multiple. You understood this? Coming to the common factors. Common factors. Take numbers 12 and 18. 12 and 18. Okay? Here, we have to write the factors. Here, we had written the multiples. Here, we will write the factors. You know how to write the factors now. 1, 12, 2, 6, 3 and 4. 18. 1, 18, 2, 9, 3, and 6. Now mark the common factors. Which all are the common factors? 1 is a common factor. Here also 1 is there. 2 is a common factor. 3 is a common factor. 6 is a common factor. Now we have marked the common factors. Which is the highest among them? 6. So highest common factor 
of 2 and uh, sorry 12 and 18 is nothing but I told you factor is always lesser than or equal to the given number multiple is always greater than or equal to the given number but when we are finding the highest common factor or least common multiple of two numbers again that is applicable highest common factor will be lesser than or equal to the given numbers least common multiple will be more than or equal to the given numbers okay for example here 12 and 18 are the numbers what is the hcf 6 it is lesser than both the numbers what about this 2 and 3 LCM is 6, which is more than 2 and 3. Okay. So, whenever you think of a bigger number or bigger solution, then actually you are going for LCM. Whenever you are settling with smaller number or when you got a clue that you will get smaller number as an answer, then you are settling with HCM. This understanding you have to have. Because in the examination, they will not directly ask you to find out the LCM or HCF. They will give one problem. You have to decide first. You have to decide what you want to do. Okay. So here, usually HCF will be smaller. For example, I mean, I'll come to those examples later. Okay. You understood the basics of LCM and HCF? Okay. Let us try with, uh, you know, like, Two numbers first, two numbers first. I'll take uh, 24 and 27 as the numbers. I want to find out LCM and HCF at a time, at a time. You don't have to work out separately for LCM and HCF. In one go, you can find out both LCM and HCF. First thing that we are trying is HCF. Next thing that we'll be trying is LCM. So first HCF means... We are finding one number which can divide all the given numbers. We are finding one number which can divide all the given numbers. Okay. 24 and 27. With which number I can divide? Sure. So 3. 3 8s are 3 9s are. Can I divide 8 and 9 any further? Can I divide 8 and 9 any further? They can be individually divided. But we don't have a common factor to divide 8 and 9 by a single number. Here, after 3, we cannot try any other number to divide these numbers. Yes or no? Yes. So, simply this 3 is a factor which can divide both 24 and 27. Don't consider this 8 and 9 while you are writing HCF. HCF is factor. Factor is nothing but divisor also. You are considering only divisor when you are finding HCF. So, HCF is equal to what? 3. Now, when the job of HCF is done, you go for LCM. Because HCF you will get in the starting. LCM we will get at the end. Okay. Now, 8 and 9 have to be divided. 8 and 9 have to be divided. Is there any number which can divide both 8 and 9? So there you finish the process. In our school it has been taught like until you get 1-1, one, one, you do that. Now we are not in that stage. We don't have that much time also. Okay. When you cannot divide these numbers any further by any common factor, leave that. And multiply these numbers in L shape. Multiply these numbers in L shape. LCM is equal to 3 into 8 into 9. 3 8s are 24, 24 9s are 260. Okay, fine. I will give one more problem. I want HCF of these numbers, 15 and 16. 1, 
aren't there any numbers which can divide both 15 and 60? No. When you don't have any common factor, then one natural factor is there. That is 1. So, HCF is 1. HCF is 1. When HCF is 1, even the LCM will become very easier to find out. When HCF is 1 means, you don't have any further process to divide at all. You have to keep them as it is. So, the LCM is what? Nothing but their product. When you are finding the HCF of two numbers, and if the HCF is 1, then LCM is nothing but their product. Got it? So, here the answer is what? 240? Now, tell me, this 15, is it a prime number? 16, is it a prime number? If we want to divide them individually, we have many ways to divide. We can divide by 3, we can divide by 5, we can divide by 2, we can divide by 4, we can divide by 8. But when we are trying them together, when we are trying them together, we don't have any common factor than 1. Though these numbers are not prime, these numbers are called as co-prime. These numbers are called as co-prime because they are prime to each other. That means they don't have any common factor to divide them. That is why they are called as co-prime. Though those numbers are not prime, but they are co-prime. They are prime to each other. Or other fact you can keep in mind, whenever the HCF of two numbers is 1, those numbers are nothing but co-prime numbers. Whenever HCF of two numbers is 1, those numbers are co-prime. Okay? And this trick is not applicable for three-digit number. Simple, it is what? It is applicable only for two-digit numbers. Whenever we are, you know, like uh, uh, telling that these are co-prime numbers, usually we say it for two numbers. Okay? For these two numbers, one more fact we have to remember. One more fact we have to remember. I will take one more example. Uh, let's say 6 and um, 14. 6 and 14. Find the HCF. Find the HCF. HCF. 2. 2 3s are 2 7s. What is HCF? This is HCF. And what about LCM? LCM is 2 into 3 into 7. Correct? 2 into 3 into 7. That is 42. See here. See here. 6 is a number. And what all are its factors? 14 is a number. What all are its factors? 1, 2. You have marked it as HCF. All other numbers you have multiplied and you have written as LCM. Yes or no? HCF is 2. But here we have written 2 into 3 into 7. This extra 2 is coming from here. Here only 1, 2 is existing. Actually, this 2 is common for both 6 and 14. If you write in this fashion, you will get 2 here. One more 2 is here. That 2 we are using. Because here we have taken this as HCF. But we are not discarding it, right? Again, we are considering it for LCM also. But there is no fun in writing twice there. So, we have written once. Through this, I want you to understand understand see what is the product of 6 and 14 6 and 14 14 6 AD 4 what about the product of HCF 2 and LCM 42 84 only because all the factors we are using right 
there are totally four factors one factor is used as hcf other three factors are used for lcm so with this we can learn that the product of two numbers product of two numbers here number 1 is 6 number 2 is 14 product of two numbers is equal to the lcm i mean the product of lcm and hcf of those numbers product of the given numbers and this is applicable only for two numbers not for three numbers that is never applicable for three numbers okay fine number one into number two is equal to lcm into hcf so this is nothing but the product of two numbers is equal to the product of the lcm and hcf of those numbers done three numbers we cannot apply okay cool yeah and one more factor i want you to observe for example 2 4 8 are the numbers don't try to solve with pen and paper 2 4 and 8 are the numbers tell me the hcf sure so this is our hcf what is lcm hcf is 2 means what 2 can divide all the given numbers lcm is Eight. That means what? Eight is the common multiple for all these numbers. Two four is eight. Four two is eight. Eight one is eight. See, the range of the LCM will always begin from the highest given number. This can lie only this way. HCF. It always begin from the least given number, and it will proceed to the left. In this range, neither LCM nor HCF will come. HCF is always lesser than or equal to the given least number. LCM is always greater than or equal to the highest given number. Okay, highest given number. In this range, you will never get the answer for HCF and LCM. If at all you have got the answer here, that is wrong. Got it? So now, what we are trying to understand, what is factor, what is multiple, what is least common, uh, sorry, what is highest common factor and least common multiple, and finally, what is the characteristic of those numbers. HCF will always be lesser than or equal to the least given number. LCM is always greater than or equal to the highest given number. But this least, least common multiple, this least is always confusing. Whenever this least comes, now always our mind will go towards the smaller number. But actually, LCM is relatively a bigger number. HCF, highest common factor. But still, our mind will work for bigger numbers. No. Highest common factor, we have to target the smaller numbers. Our answer has to be smaller. With this, we'll solve few problems here. First, uh, take this problem. 48, 36 and 64, 48, 36 and 64, simultaneously we are finding LCM and HCF, simultaneously we are finding LCM and HCF, first HCF that means what, you will try to divide all the given numbers, you will try to divide all the given numbers, if you target any two numbers, we cannot call that as HCF at all. There should be a number which should be able to divide all the given numbers. Then only we can consider that as a common factor. Okay. Now, tell me a number which can divide all the given numbers. Start with least number. 0 and 1 you can't. So, 2. 224 is a 2 again try to divide all the given numbers again try 
again try with two two again try with two since there is one odd number you cannot divide it by two drop the idea of using two now try with nine these two can be divided by nine even number you can't try five not possible so if you think of the square roots of these numbers then like all your options are over now so hcf is what hcf is equal to 4 2 into 2 hcf is equal to 4 now go further for lcm now try with numbers which can at least divide two numbers which can at least divide two numbers so two again two again two six za two nine za two eights again here don't don't make it four and half okay okay so two six za two nine za two eights za again what we can try two two three za two fours are right nine like that now only one even number is left you can't try with two now three three ones are three threes are and keep four like that and i know in the school we have been taught until you get one 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 but that is not required now now multiply all the numbers in L shape. L shape that will give us LCM. 2 into 2, 4. 4 2 is 8. 8 2 is 16. 16 3 is 48. 48 3 is a... Okay, definitely you don't know. Try. 144. 144 into 4. 576. Fine. Yeah. Is this okay? Yeah. Now, we'll try this first one. Look for a number which is divisible, uh, I mean, which can divide all the given numbers. First of all, we have an odd number. That means we cannot try with any even number. Drop the idea of using even number. Next number is 3. Can 3 divide all the given numbers? So don't try 4 because already we have dropped 2. No need of taking 4. 5? Enough. Nearest square root of 27 is 5. Done. So no number can divide 16, 24 and 27 except so HCF is for these numbers HCF is equal to 1. Now don't go and multiply all these numbers for LCM that is applicable only for two numbers. Here we cannot. At least we have the chance of dividing two numbers. No? So now try with those numbers which can divide at least two numbers. So here, I can divide with 2, yeah, 2 8s are, 2 12s are, 27 keep it like that only. Again, can I try with 2, 2 4s are, 2. again 2, 2 2s are, 2 3s are, 227 sir. Now only one even number is there. We cannot try with 2. Now try with 3. Now with which number we will try? To divide 2 and 9? No. So stop. And this is your LCM. And don't get confused that you know Whatever that we have used as factors, they are common factors for at least two numbers. 
common factor for two numbers. These numbers have not divided all the given numbers. So HCF is one. We are using it for LCM only. Don't use this for HCF at all. HCF is already done. Then only we have proceeded for LCM. Okay. Two twos are four. Four twos are eight. Eight threes are twenty-four. Twenty-four twos are forty-eight. Forty-eight nines are. 432. Okay, done. Other two problems you solve in tomorrow's class. We'll look at the LCM and HCF of fractions and decimals. Fractions and decimals. After that, we'll go for the application of LCM and HCF. Maybe it would require uh, another yeah yeah thirty forty minutes. Then we'll go for the next. topic in numeracy done these two problems you try to solve okay thank you and uh, in divisibility test other four or three numbers whatever that i have left try to factorize that okay thank you